Hey, I'm Mark Roanek with Fishing 411. And I'm Chad Thompson with Pasha Lake Cabins. You know, two of my favorite things are fishing and wilderness. Stick around because we're going to show you how to put the two together into an awesome adventure. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood e Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Also, these fine sponsors. You know, the Argo is the ultimate UTV vehicle. It'll go through just about anything. It's amphibious, take it in the water, take it on land. It will do anything a side-by-side -side or a quad or a snow machine will do, and it'll do a whole lot more. And that's why I use an Argo on Fishing 4-on-1. Let's get this show on the road here. Beautiful. So beautiful. Just a nice little shot there. There he is. There he is. All right. First blood. That's a nice fish, Mark. That's exactly what we're looking for. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice start, Chad. I love those oddball jigs, man. <laughs> I do, too. I do, too. And that, is that kind of typical of what we're going to see today, you think? Yeah, that's kind of on the... Here, let me get up better hang on them there. That's kind of on the smaller side All right. for what this lake is capable of, but nice walleye nonetheless. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. That's 19, 20 inches long. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a beautiful fish. So, you know, today I'm not really, you know, we had a nice fish fry already here. I'm thinking, are you going to keep fish or catch and release? Well, we might take some of the smaller ones to eat. All right. Well, that one's, uh, that's that's certainly one to go back then. Yep. All right. Excellent. Good start. Good start. You know, if you're going to come up here and do a little bit of walleye jigging, you want to definitely want to bring a high-quality walleye rod. The biggest mistake I see people do is they invest in low-end fishing equipment and it lets them down at the critical moments. You need a lightweight, sensitive rod. You want something that's IM8 graphite. Uh, you want a high-quality spinning reel, and then I would recommend braided line. In this case, we're using 10-pound test braid. What I would suggest is a six and a half to a seven-foot medium light action rod. Um, as long as you're going with an IM8 graphite, you're going to be fine. The one I have in my hand is called a Dead Eye. It's made by Alcuma. I'm a little biased because I actually had a hand in developing these rods, but I've caught thousands of walleyes on them. They're excellent rods for the money, about $100. Then your spinning reel, in this case I've got a trio on here. There's lots of other spinning reels you could pick from Alcuma. This is about a $65 to $70 reel. So in my hand, i got about $175 worth of gear, and I'm telling you, it's world-class equipment. It'll last you for years and years, and you'll be satisfied with it. Better to get good stuff now than to buy inexpensive stuff and then wish later you'd bought the good stuff. All right. Well, that looks like a solid fish. Mm -hmm. That looks like a solid fish. 
I'll help you with the net here when the time comes right. In the meantime, let's see if we can't get a double header. There's another, there's more fish down there, Mark. I'm marking a ton of them. Another nice walleye. There you go, sir. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. That's what we want. Another gorgeous fish. He'd be a good eater, but we're going to throw today. this guy back. And away he goes. On these remote trips like this, you want a checklist of things to take with you so you don't forget important items. Because once you get in here, you're not going back out to fetch something that you forgot. Uh, it really is important to make a checklist. And uh, there's some essential items. Obviously, your rod and reel is going to be important. A landing net is going to be important. Um, whatever tackle you expect to fish, whether it's jig fishing like we are today or some other type of fishing uh, tackle that's going to be necessary, is going to be important. A GPS unit is going to be critical um, on your UTV so that you can get back to these places and get back home safely. So definitely a GPS there. And then a portable GPS for in the boat with a fish finder. I see Chad's got his Lowrance rigged up here portable. It's just perfect for this because once we locate fish, we can get right back on those spots and stay on those spots. So those are the essential checklist of items that you definitely want to take in here. Um, there may be some other personal items that you'd look at, but those are the important items. If you take those, you'll have a successful day of fishing. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country, That Real. Jed, I know you call these, uh, uh, this, uh, I, I can't remember the term that you use to coin this. You have an interesting term that you call, you call this type of fishing. It's called adventure fishing. Adventure fishing, mm -hmm. that's what it is. And uh, you have a wide variety of lakes that you service. How many lakes in total are you are you servicing here with your customers? In a season, our guests will fish literally over 100 different lakes, just from our little base camp there at Pasha Lake. 100 different mm -hmm. lakes. <laughs> That's amazing. So none of these lakes get much pressure. Then you're spreading out the pressure. You know, people are fishing a wide variety of lakes, so no lake is really getting beat up. No, no. It's like if you go to a fly-in camp, you know, every week they're cycling new hunter or new fishermen to that particular lake, none of these lakes see that kind of pressure. I hear you. And uh, that would explain why the fishing has been so good and so consistent. I've been coming here, I think this is our fourth or fifth season, and uh, we keep coming back because I haven't even scratched the surface on all the lakes that you have available. We've only fished just a few of them, and they've all been excellent fishing, and you're right. It's, it's drive-to fishing with flying quality, is guess the way I would describe it. Yeah, we were talking last night, you said you'd never even heard of this lake. And you've been here how many times, and fishing here is just phenomenal. You don't necessarily need an ATV to get to all the lakes, such as, uh, for example, Onaman. You could drive a vehicle right to the trailhead, and then we have six boats and motors down on Onaman Lake, and all the guest has to do is drive up, park, walk down to the lake, the boat, the motor, the gas, everything's already there waiting for them. And that's one of your more popular lakes. I know I fished that. That is an exceptional walleye lake. Yeah. Um, but you have to have, you know, the, uh, shall we say, the outdoor spirit, because it's it's a pretty good walk in there. It's what, maybe 20 minute walk to walk in there? Yeah, it's a mile and a quarter walk okay. from where you have to park the vehicle down to the boats. And the nice thing is it's a ministry maintained trail. Okay. So it's all hard pack. It is a little uneven ground, but it's definitely a nice walking path. And like you said, the fishing there is top notch. Yeah, second fishing to none. is it's absolutely exceptional there. You just have to be willing to uh, to carry your stuff in. You got to carry your gas in. You got to carry your rods and reels in, obviously. Yep. Um, your life preservers, all that stuff has to go in and come out with you. Mm -hmm. So, cool beans. It's all coming together here. Nice day of walleye fishing. You know, when it comes to jig fishing, most people don't think too much about the styles of jigs that they use. They just go buy roundhead jigs, and frankly, roundhead jigs will work in many situations. But for what we're doing here back trolling, I like the oddball jig. It's a stand-up product. It's designed to keep the hook point up off the bottom. And especially when you're fishing with plastic or live bait of any type, that hook up off the bottom prevents that, you know, that jig from snagging as much. And more importantly, it puts that hook point right in the roof of the fish's mouth. When you look at these fish as we land them, most of them are hooked right in the roof of the mouth, right where you want to stick them. Nothing is better than an oddball, in my opinion, for doing that. And it's a product made by bait rigs. I've been fishing these jigs the better part of my adult life, and frankly, I can see no need to invest in any other jig. It is the jig of choice um, for most jig fishing applications. All right, let's turn his head back this way and we'll get him in the ego. There he goes. Wow, that, that is, is a big fish. fish. 
Solid might, form. We might need the pliers on that one, Mark. Oh, he hates it. He hates yeah, it. He did. Right down. Yeah, he that, right down. That shows you how aggressively they're feeding right now. Yeah, if you see the jig. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first segment, Walleye Fishing near Beardmore, Ontario. Beardmore, Ontario is a place that we fish often. It's a place called Pasha Lake Cabins. Now, we use the Argo to access that world-class fishing. In this next segment, we're going to use the Argo again, only this time we're traveling all the way back to Wawa, Ontario, and we're going ice fishing for, of all things, brook trout. Stick around. You're going to love this one. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Okuma, High Performance, and Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living. There he is. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a really good fish. You know, we're up here in Wawa, Ontario. Oh my goodness, he's just lumping. Turn the drag up just a little bit. We're here in Wawa, Ontario, fishing some of these remote lakes out here. Now, a lot of these lakes are only accessible to, with Argos or snow machines. We have the Argo out here today. It was about a 12 mile trek all the way out here. And our journey was to catch a fish, I think just like the one I have on right now. Man, this is just thumping. Oh, there he is. Coming up on the transducer, it got me down in the weeds a little bit. Oh my goodness. All that, my friends, is a gorgeous brook trout. So let's kind of flesh out that last fish that I just caught. You know, if you're an ice fisherman that walleye fishes, you probably have the right gear to catch these brook trout. You know, I'm actually using my walleye setup to catch these fish, and we're actually kind of fishing the same way we would for walleye. On the business end of everything, I'm using a little tiny quarter ounce Clio. You know, it's just basically a jigging spoon is what we got. There's all different kinds out there. Um, but this little Clio is what I'm using right now. You know, the line that I'm using is actually eight pound test Maxima Ultra Green. I personally believe that the Ultra Green is clearer than a fluorocarbon. So instead of fluorocarbon leader, I have that Ultra Green on there. Um, then of course I got a little barrel swivel up top and that's just gonna stop line twist. You know, we have our sonar and that's how we're marking our fish. And it's a lot like how we would ice fish for walleyes. We have tip up set. And we're just kind of holding out in certain areas and then we'll move around as the day progresses. But right now we just caught that fish in this hole. So I'm all set up with my shelter and I'm gonna stick out here a little bit longer and see if any more fish are in the area. If I'm not marking more fish, then I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna to move to a different spot. Hey, I got a flag up, time to check a tip up. So far, it's been a pretty good bite today. Put this up and see what we got going on here. And uh, no resistance. I think he just grabbed it and pulled it. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. He just pulled it and then uh, let it go again. I'm gonna let him go back down and try this again here. Okay, so when that goes, uh oh, I just got one right here. I got one right here. He just hit it while I had it in my hand and he, he dropped it. <laughs> he literally pulled it right out of my hands. Let's try to see if he's still hanging down there and hungry. <laughs> it's a new kind of tip up fishing, jig tip upping. So. He's there. There he is. Look at that. That's something that's never happened to me before. Look at that. <laughs> we had a tip-up flag go, and I come over to check it, but there's no fish there. All right, so I dropped it back down, 
And as soon as I dropped it back down, I got a hit and I missed him, okay? So I just dropped it back down by hand and they just jigged it a little bit by hand and look at there. Really nice brook trout. That is so cool. Now that's what I'm talking about. Wawa Ontario brook trout action. What a beautiful fish. That one's gorgeous. You know what? I feel sorry for him because he bit twice. <laughs> I missed him the first time. Actually, he bit three times. I'm going to let him go right back down the hole. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Oh, man, it's a nice one. It's a really nice one. Oh, come on, girl. Now that is what we came up here for. That is a gorgeous brook trout. Now this particular lake is stocked. They put about a thousand fish in this lake a year. You know, this is a great eating fish, so we're gonna keep this particular fish right here. You know, a lot of places you catch a fish that big, a wild fish, we wanna let it go. But this particular fishery is a put and take fishery. Well, we're gonna put this fish in a slow makeshift live well we made. There's one good thing you can do. We're sticking around a certain area and body of water, so we made this little live well. And what that does is it keeps the fish from freezing. If you wanna get some great pictures later, that fish isn't gonna be all covered in snow and ice. You'll get some great pictures that you can put up on Facebook. We actually had a whole bunch of guests on this particular episode. Jamie Robinson and his entire family actually came out and worked with us. His dad, his mom, his wife, his daughter, and his son all worked with us and we all had a great time catching brook trout. Another beautiful brook trout. Look at the colors on him. His spots are like, I don't know what the proper wording is, but you don't get a much more beautiful fish than this brook trout. And actually look, it's, instead of using sinkers for a weight, we use the Yakima Thinema jig as their weight as an attractor and helps uh, you get land a few more brook trout. Additional considerations provided by Stryker Brands. Give Mother Nature the cold shoulder. And Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Fishhawk Electronics. Featuring Fishhawk's Catch Fish Guarantee. Hi, I'm Kendall Alsh, and we're at the Ultimate Fishing Show in Novi, one of the best places to come and check out great new products for the upcoming season. So for 2015, Lowrance has got some awesome new stuff. These are the Generation 3 Hybrid Touchscreen Units. We've got some new button controls on the side. We've added a bonded glass screen, so we even have multi-touch now where we can pinch to zoom. New controls over here that help us operate through the system faster. And even better than that, we've now built in chirp sonar, and Wi-Fi. Even better, they come at a great price. Again, I'm Kendall Walsh. We really appreciate you taking a minute to check out the products from Lowrance. They're truly the only option for me when it comes to finding fish and navigating on the water. The setting for this week's adventure is a place called Wawa, Ontario. Wawa is located about three hours straight north of Sault Ste. Marie. It's on Highway 17. Incidentally, it's one of the prettiest drives you'll ever take any time of year, but it's especially gorgeous in the wintertime. Uh, well, we're real fortunate in Wawa. There's a lot of deep, cold uh, lakes with their spring fed, and the brook trout need the cold water for in the summer to survive. There's uh, abundant of bait. There's uh, dace minnows, primary forage, along with crayfish, freshwater shrimp, and then obvious, obviously with brook trout, uh, all the larvae they eat as well. Like today, we're on uh, using an Argo and snow machine, and uh, we can we leave right from the town of Wawa to go ice fishing, and say within a 40-kilometer radius of town. There is literally probably 50 lakes with brook trout, lake trout and splake in them. And uh, the majority of them are stocked, but there's also a lot of naturals uh, in those lakes as well. It starts on New Year's Day, January 1st. That's our trout opener. And uh, so that's uh, a very a special day in my family there. It's a tradition basically that we go out every January 1st. So we usually don't see New Year's Eve. We don't see midnight work because we know we're getting up early and heading out for some brook trout. Hey, let's take a second and talk about brook trout. You know, they're actually members of the Arctic char family. In fact, they're very closely related to lake trout. But don't confuse the two species. The reason you don't want to is because lake trout are deep water creatures. In the wintertime, you're typically going to find them in the deepest available water. It's not uncommon to catch them in 100 feet of water in the middle of the wintertime. Brook trout, different animal altogether. In fact, brook trout are structure loving creatures. They like to be in shallow water. In fact, on this particular shoot, all of our fish have come in less than 10 feet of water. Six, seven feet of water has been the average depth that we've caught fish at. We've actually caught them as shallow as four feet of water. So brook trout like the shorelines and the dike structure. Lake trout, they like the basins of the lake in deeper water. Oh, 
Now that is a great start to the day. It's a gorgeous brook trout. I am quickly falling in love with brook trout fishing. If you want to come up here and catch some of these brook trout, you're going to need a tracked vehicle. A snow machine with a wide track will get you by, and there's no doubt about that, and that's what's most popular up here. We used our Argo um, with tracks on that vehicle. If you come up here with a wheeled style of, of vehicle, a quad or a side-by-side, -side, you're never going to get around up here. The problem is it's deep snow, lots of snow, two, three foot of snow, and what we ran into was about a foot of slush underneath all that snow. So if you don't have the right equipment, you're not getting on the ice. There's a couple of reasons why the brook trout fishing here is so good. For one, inaccessibility. These are very difficult fisheries to get to. They're in remote areas, and in fact, many of these lakes only get fished in the wintertime because there's no way to get to them otherwise. The other thing is the management of how they protect their fishery. For example, you can have five brook trout here in this part of the world, but of those five brook trout, they have to be less than 12 inches in length, or if they're over 12 inches in length, you can have two. So they closely guard their fishery, and that's why they have such world-class brook trout fishing here. Oh, and by the way, they also stock. So there's fisheries that have stockfish, there's fisheries that have wildfish, and there's fisheries that have both. And that's part of the reason why they have such good fishing up here. 14, 15 inches. Fishing here north of Wawa with the Romanux. Fishing 411. Whoa! There's one, Jamie. Oh, still got him? Oh, yeah. Yep, he's still on there. Get the transducer out of the way for you. Man, that thing just, he just thumped it too. There we go. Now, this guy's, does cut your line or anything? Oh, it looks like we're good. Now, he, uh, I'm it's about seven feet of water right now. Oh, here he comes. Oh, it's another nice one. Oh, yeah, that's a great fish. Oh, he turned in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him up here. You got him? Yeah, I think so. Wow, that's another gorgeous brook trout. If you haven't been up to Wawa, Ontario, you really owe it to yourself to come back up here and do this. It's just an amazing fishery. My name is Jake Romanek. You've been watching Fishing 4-on-1. We'll see you right here, same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Orca Coolers, built for everyday use and total abuse. Fishing 4 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood E-Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Yeah. He's there. There he is. Look at that. This is something that's never happened to me before. Look at that. <laughs>